It was a dark and stormy night on the Midnight Express. What you thought would be a quick train ride from Munich to Innsbruck turned into the most prolonged three hours of your life. At the mark of the first hour, you were alerted that a body was found in the sleeping car. Thankfully, you and your team of detectives were on board to investigate and, upon arrival, discovered the body of one Pietro Gruber. Pietro had the misfortune of being shot by an unknown assailant. By all accounts, Mr. Gruber was a quiet man. He was traveling alone. He was headed back home to Seefeld, Austria, expected by his fiancée, Brigitte de Jong, a Norwegian school teacher. But something about his untimely death is odd. The train is quiet, and there was no gunshot heard. This is a scenic train ride, which means that the killer wouldn't have anywhere to go if they jumped off the train and could still be on board. The curious part about all of this is that only seven other people are on board, not including the train staff or your team. You can't rule anyone out, but the likelihood of it being a train attendant or one of your investigators is highly unlikely. You'll have to search every carriage and interrogate everyone on board. You can begin where the body was found, in the sleeping car. Next door to Mr. Gruber's room is a lonely widow by the name of Josephine Armitage. Her late husband was a former conductor on this very train. She states that she had just returned from the dining car and retired to her room to sleep for the remainder of the train ride. For obvious reasons, this train causes her great sorrow, and she tried to spend the least amount of time wandering about the train. She says, she didn't hear a gun go off while she was in her room, but the murder could have occurred earlier. You'll also have to check the baggage cars. Joseph Becker, the train's new conductor, is there, securing passenger luggage. He claims he was sent by Mrs. Armitage to collect her baggage and had trouble finding it when the commotion began. Mr. Becker, of course, was the first at the scene after the body was found and notified the investigators. Once the investigation started, he returned to the baggage car to locate her missing baggage. Then, in the coach car, you'll speak with Miss Mary Vanderberg, a governess on her way to a new assignment. She is headed to Innsbruck to begin teaching a family of young girls. She usually doesn't travel too far away from her home in England, but she decided to broaden her horizons after her last placement in Germany. She claims to have been reading in her seat when the murder occurred and intends to remain there. Miss Vanderberg is seated closest to the sleeping car, and she also says that she did not hear a gunshot and did not see Mr. Gruber behaving strangely. Once you make it to the dining car, you'll meet with Caroline Pullman, a young maid on her way to a new assignment. She and her husband George, who had left moments earlier to smoke, are on their way to a wealthy woman's estate. She will be the housekeeper, and he will be the keeper of the grounds. Mrs. Pullman says that her husband went back to the room in the sleeping car to wash up after supper. He had spilled wine on his shirt and wanted to tend to it before the stain set in. She offered to do it, but George insisted on going while she finished her meal. She says they did not know Mr. Gruber, but he was staring at her husband strangely when they boarded the train. In the lounge car, you will meet a somewhat disagreeable woman named Madame Sophia Harper. Madame Sophia is a proud woman who has come into a large sum of money. She intends to purchase a home in Austria for her and her daughter's family. The madam does not know Mr. Gruber, but had a few bad words about his strange behavior while boarding the train. She says that his demeanor made her nervous, and she wished never to see him again. He reminded her of a man her late husband did business with a few years prior, but she cannot definitively say that she knows him. In the furthest guest carriage, the observation car, 
is where you'll meet Mr. George Pullman. He was smoking a cigarette when you approached him. He seemed to be a quiet man, but he said he did recognize Mr. Gruber as a man he did business with a year ago. Mr. Gruber cheated him out of some money, but Mr. Pullman insisted that the money was returned in full. He was merely wary of Mr. Gruber when he boarded the train because the two parted on less than good terms. George was nervous that he would cause a scene, so Mr. Pullman insisted he keep his distance. He did not see Gruber the first hour of the train ride, although you do notice that the wine stain is still on his shirt, though it seems there was an effort to cover it with the jacket he was wearing. Finally, in the engine car, you'll meet Hercules White, the engineer driving the train. He says that he frequently sees Mr. Gruber on the train, but he never had a memorable conversation with him. He claims to be polite to each guest he meets, but he doesn't leave the engine room much, so there is no reason for him to interact with guests. It looks like you're going to have to pull out all of the stops to catch this killer before the train reaches its final destination and the killer slips away. Success! The killer has been apprehended. After some quick detective work and intensive interrogations, you discover that the killer was none other than Mrs. Pullman, a wife who could not forgive the man who conned her husband. She thought that her husband followed Mr. Gruber to conduct more business. Mr. Pullman barely recovered from their last business venture and could not stand to see her husband fall into another one of Gruber's get-rich-quick schemes. So, she removed the temptation altogether. When he returned from the car without changing his shirt, she thought he went to speak with Gruber instead. But as it turns out, he decided to wear a jacket instead. What was a simple misunderstanding and a massive assumption turned into a great tragedy. Failure! You could not discover the murder in time. When you pull up to the train station in Austria, you cannot detain the passengers for long. With little evidence and no suspects, the train is emptied and the case goes unsolved. Here's to hoping that the killer won't kill again.